It's um, 11 p.m. Um, I have something to share. I said I was not going to share. God gave it to me. And I said, nope, I'm not going there. And um, I tell him no a lot, actually, because as part of being a writer, I'm always having to defend what I write or what I say because most people don't understand that when you're a writer, God gives you the gift to write somebody's story without knowing anything about them. But um, I said I will share this because this is going to set somebody free. And I was once in bondage, and I know how liberating the feeling is, and I can't go back. I would say over the past two weeks, God has uh, just out the blue would say to me, Satan wants to sift you as wheat. And uh, that comes out of Luke twenty two thirty one. And I thought, well, you know, he's just telling me this because my husband's best friend preached an awesome sermon on that scripture last year. So I was just still playing in my mind. Um, but last night I was trying to sleep and God said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. And I'm like, Lord, wh why do you keep telling me this? I know he does. I know the word. I study it day and night. Why are you telling me this? Well, I'm a baker, and whenever I think of the word sift, the first thing I think of is separate. Now, I've been a loner my whole life. Nothing to do with depression, nothing like that. That's just my personality. But with everything, there's pros and cons. And uh, one of the cons of being a loner is you're always by yourself, uh, which puts you in a vulnerable state. You know, most times when you hear that someone was robbed, someone was murdered, they always say, most of the time, that person was by their self. So um, being to yourself and by yourself a lot of times makes you vulnerable and available to the wiles of the devil. Um, I had a boyfriend uh, some years ago when I was a teenager who always needed to get me by myself. Um, he started by, you know, just trying to separate me, sift me away from everyone who loved me. Uh, me and my brother are very close, um, loving the pieces. And my brother actually intimidated the guy, not on purpose, just my brother being my brother. My boyfriend was intimidated by him. So he started um, with my brother. He would say little things about my brother, have me make, make me look at him in a different kind of way. The smallest little wrong thing that my brother would do he would highlight it and be like, see, how's he your brother if he doing that? Or if me and my brother would get in an argument, see, your, your brother, if he loved you, that wouldn't happen. Now, what siblings don't argue? What siblings don't go tit for tat? But he did it so much, and because he had me alone, he was able to start changing the way that I looked at my brother. Uh, me and my cousin, best friends, always talking on the phone, always over each other's houses. Well, he desired to control me, and he also started working on my mindset towards my cousin. Well, look at her. She did this. Well, did she congratulate you when you did that? You know, just with nitpick, nitpick, nitpick. And eventually, because I was alone all the time, just really only hearing his voice, his voice, whatever he said, became Bible. I had a good friend. And um, he would always just do stuff, say stuff, point out little nitpick, petty things about my friend that would eventually turn me against my friend. And eventually, just crossing people off the list one by one, he was able to get me where he needed me to be. He was able to separate me from everyone who loved me. And he would tell me things like, you know, there is no one blacker than you. And because you are so black. You ought to be glad that I want you. Not knowing or not able to reach out to people because he had separated me. So I could not hear my mother's voice telling me that my black is beautiful. He would tell me because I was so fat that no one wanted me that I need to be glad that he wanted me. Because after him, no one else would want me. I have no choice but to stay with him because I'm so fat. And because he had me isolated with just him in my world. I could not reach out to my brother 
who would tell me that I was made in God's image, that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I had no one else's voice to listen to because I allowed him to separate me, to sift me as wheat. And I noticed things like, he didn't have a problem if I was close to people who were out of town. So me and a cousin who lived in Florida, all well, me and her could be cool because she was no threat. Because there was too much distance between us. There was no way that she could separate me from him. I also um, think about a friend that I had. Um, me and her were real good friends for about five years. You know, we would always get together and we would pray with each other. I mean, our prayers moved mountains. And then just one day she told me that she was angry at me because I did not hug her. And I'm thinking, well, I said to her, when have I ever hugged you? I am not a hugger. If you know anything about me, I am not a hugger. But she used the fact that I did not hug her that day to separate herself from me. And it really made me mad. But then I realized, you know, that was Satan working in her because we don't have problems with people. We have problems with these spirits that work inside of people. And because me and her were so powerful together, that because me and her, you know, we could move mountains, we were praying warriors and all this stuff together, we were a threat to Satan. And he desired to sift us as wheat. And he was able to separate us. To this day, I have a blood sister, a biological sister that most people don't even know that I have. Um, because she allowed her husband to get her alone. She allowed him to be the only voice that she heard. And because of that, he has sifted her as wheat. I'm saying all this to say, evaluate your relationships. Not even in boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Even when you're talking about co-workers, you have to be careful of the space that you're allowing people in. You have to be careful with who you eat with. If the Last Supper didn't teach me nothing else, it taught me to be careful with who I break bread with. Whenever I tell people that, they say, Rita, Jesus ate with strangers all the time. He sure did. And he ended up on the cross. Be careful who you eat with. Literally and figuratively. You cannot ingest everything that people are serving you. Be careful of people who want to get you alone, who want you to be vulnerable, who want to be the only voice that you hear. Be careful of having people in your life whose only mission is to take away your joy. Um, going back to my ex-boyfriend, I love music and he would hide my radio. I've always been a writer. And whenever he would see me writing, he would say things like, ain't nobody gonna buy it. You couldn't make that rhyme. You know, things like that. So just think about if you love basketball, do you have a friend every time the game is finna come on, oh, she needs you to take her to the store or something like that. If you have had a relationship close to someone and all of a sudden, you and that person aren't that close anymore. All of a sudden, you find a problem with everything they do. All of a sudden, you have to question their character when you've never had to question their character before. Ask yourself why. Who have you allowed in your circle? Now, I'm not saying that people don't keep up a facade and all that because they do. But ask yourself, has this person really put up a facade to where I do need to stop being friends with this person, to where I don't need to talk to my auntie anymore? Or has your new friend, your boyfriend, your whoever come in and tainted your mind? Have you allowed yourself to be sifted? 